Hi guys, and welcome back to The Restoration. On this exciting episode, it's all about the motor, getting it cleaned up, painted, and back onto the tractor. We do have the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. But spoiler alert, the agony of the defeat that happens at the end, it does get fixed on the next episode, so don't worry too much. But before I show that, I have to tell you, I'm okay today, but yesterday I had a very big scare. I was walking through the woods and walked upon a sleeping dinosaur. I guess he'd be classified a dinosnore. <laughs> <laughs> Jaystar. All right, here's the last major system. And uh, I was gonna try to paint around stuff, but looking at it, it needs to be disassembled. So these wires are a hodgepodge. This is kind of more like a video diary for me right here. And uh, I'm going to take this apart. Not fully, but just take it down and get everything cleaned up and painted and put back together. Well, this pulley took some serious persuasion to get off, but uh, I uh, went down in my basement, machined a little thing for uh, the puller to seat on centered up. And I also went and rented a three jaw puller from O'Reilly's. And what I did was hook the three jaw puller with this on here, and it was able to finally pull off that. Um, that pulley. And now I'm going to use this. This I originally made this to connect to the block here so I can lift it up and get under it. So let's see if that works like it's supposed to. This engine cowl was just cake with grease and dirt. So I just took a little time with the screwdriver and scraped it off and then degreased it and cleaned it. Once it was all cleaned up, I stuck it in a sandblaster. I know what some of you guys are thinking, which is, why is this guy going to take the time to get that little dent that, on a part of the engine that can never be seen, you know, once it's put together? But I don't know, guys. They just got to do it right. They just got to do it the right way.
This part uh, was not on the engine when I got it, but it still needs to be cleaned up because that's where the carburetor attaches to in the air cleaner. So I get it cleaned up and I kind of like the color of it, so I cleaned it up and then sprayed clear coat on it. I started painting out here, but it just it was just too windy, so I took it in the garage and painted the rest of it. I know it's tough to see these parts, but I had to spray it in the garage and it's brighter outside and that's why it's kind of hard to see it. Paint really does do wonders on a job, doesn't it? It's just the primer and holy cow. It looks so much uh, much nicer. I mean, you can see um, see it's going to really look nice once the paint gets on it because the primer really makes it look pretty marvelous. Now the finish on that is very matte from that VHT uh, stuff. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Rust-Oleum barbecue paint on there, high temperature as well. And it has some more shine to it, so give it a little bit of a shine. Well, if you ask me, that looks pretty good. Well guys, originally I was going to pour 15 this thing, but then I decided um, there's some paint I want to use on it. So what I'm going to do is use my little phosphoric acid trick where I uh, put that on here and wipe it off, let it dry, and then paint over it. And that, um, it's kind of like a navel jelly in a sense that uh, it's a rust converter. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Now that the engine and cowl were painted, I started focusing my attention on all the attachments that was that have to be cleaned up and painted as well. And here's the starter getting taken care of.
Now after the engine and accessories were painted, now it was time to clean up things that attached to it. Now that I have the steering parts put on correctly, now I have to figure out how to get this thing on here by myself. And so what I did is I took the hoist and I let it come down real close and then I made it to where it's just creeping down and set it gently into place. I was trying not to mess up the paint on this oil drain so I bought myself a strap wrench and it was a cheap one. And that broke so I ended up using a pair of pliers that has plastic protectors on it and tighten the oil drain up with that. Well I thought this drive shaft was going to be easy but I can't figure it out so I'm going to have to go look back at my books. Well, once I get stuck on one thing I start on something else so put the fluid in the engine so I think it's time to Put the fluid in the bevel gearbox and the transmission. And uh, here we go. And then disaster struck. There's this gear oil pouring out. Not exactly sure why, except for maybe I overfilled it. Oh, dearie me. It's just pouring out from right there. Not exactly sure what that is, but I think I overfilled it. That's what I'm hoping that it is. Well, that stopped leaking. It's down to a drip now. I shouldn't say stop leaking, but it's down to a drip. And uh, uh, we'll fill up the gearbox and see how that does. Well, at least no leaks in the transmission so far. So that's good. I'm really just hoping that I overfill that. Um, I'm going to check that in a minute, but if not, <laughs> all this stuff's going to have to come apart. i got to figure out how to seal that bevel gearbox. Well, I think I got this figured out. Go ahead and try my theory here and see what happens. And after a lot of review, it looks like I finally figured out how this goes back on. Ta da! Time for Tractor Jet! Hi, and welcome back to Tractor Chat, the international tractor talk show sensation. For those of you who are just tuning in, you've missed an outstanding show. Olivia Munn was here. Olivia. You know, you think Olivia Munn, you think of AC electrics, but who knew she knew DC electrics, connectors? Olivia Munn is all things electric. Wait a minute. My producers are saying we only have time enough for one more caller. Out of Hollywood, California, Ariana Grande, you're on the air. Hi, Chaster1963. It's me, Ariana Grande, and I am a hot Hollywood singer. As a matter of fact, I'm so good looking when older men see me, they say Shazam. And I just have a dilemma and I need some advice. It's the time of year where we have our elections for offices at Tractor Chicks Magazine, and I'm torn between picking one of my friends who's a hot Hollywood starlet, or who I think is better suited for the job, which is a supermodel. What should I do? Well, Ariana Grande, sometimes you have to think with your heart, and other times you have to think with your head. 
My advice is, wait a minute, breaking news? This just in. The East Coast supermodels are threatening to boycott next year's John Deere Golden Three Point Hitch Award. They feel that the West Coast hot Hollywood starlets have an unfair advantage because there are more of them nominated. This is being turned over to the International Regulatory Agency, the Federal Administrative Knowledgeable Entity, to see if there's anything into these allegations. And folks, let's just keep our fingers crossed that this doesn't start another East Coast supermodels versus West Coast hot Hollywood starlets war like we had back into the 90s. Well, that's all the time we had today on Tractor Chat. We'll see you next time. Same tractor time, same tractor channel. Hi, guys, and welcome back to the... My producer's telling me we only have time for one more. Ha <laughs> ha! Good one, Dad. You're looking at the camera. I'm over there. Oh, oh, oh.